Probably the most difficult part of data operations is going to be the array block. The array block doesn't look very intimidating, but as soon as you understand how it works, it becomes super difficult. And to be fair, this might need one or two or three episodes in order for me to completely be able to explain it in a reasonable and clear way. Basically, how the array works is the array in is what number you're going to be placing the array at, and the index is going to be what position it's in. To help me explain more clearly, I'm going to use a comment block right here. How the inside of an array works is essentially you have uh, what's called an index zero, which is going to be actually your first index. So this is the first entry, you can have index one, index two, three, and then this is how the variable is basically set up. Something like to this extent. I'm going to use up to nine as an example. This index refers to which position your number is at. Your array in is what number it's going to be at. For example, index zero and array in zero will set up a like an index and an array that looks like this. I'm going to copy this over so I can re-put it back, but it's going to make this, and then if we make a, another um, array in, this is going to be the array in, and this is going to be the index. Now, don't have it confused with the same number, though. Um, it probably is easier if I write uh, index and then array in. So anything in the second column is going to correspond with the index column and anything put into array in is going to correspond with the array in column naturally. So let's just say I change this array in into a two. What does that change in our array? Well, it changes the array in into from zero to two. And let's just say I put in index of one this actually isn't going to create an index, and I'll explain why later, but if we set it up properly, it will basically plug in a 2 on index 1 as well. Perhaps the most difficult area of data operations is what we know as the array operations. Now, arrays are commonly found not only in EV3 programming, but also across multiple platforms and across different computer areas of computer studies. It's because arrays are so good at compacting information and putting it into a single accessible area and you can pull out any number from any uh, index of the array. I'm going to be quickly explaining how you write it in EV3 and obviously not in other areas of computer programming. So we use our variable block and we basically use the same area. Now if you remember properly, or if you don't remember, that's completely fine. We go to the right section of the variable in order to set it up. And we see we have text, numeric, and logic. But two of these actually say arrays, numeric and logic arrays. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using the numeric array um, as we usually do. And if you look closely, I'm going to zoom in for you right here, the array right actually has two bumps when compared to uh, one bump with the traditional numeric. This symbolizes that, well, of course, one is an array and one is a normal variable. Now, if we click up here in the variable name, even though it's the same block we where we set up high and low, there actually isn't any. It's because the variables and the arrays are completely separate. So what we want to do here is set up our uh, index properly. How do we set up our in our array? We set it up basically the same way as you would set up a normal variable. You set it up by pressing the top right corner and adding a variable. What this is is you name your array much the same way as you do variable blocks so you can use it later on in your program. I'm just going to name this array 1 for now. And so we can use this block anywhere we want in the program. You see it's already saved. It's basically the same principle as the variable block. Now, the key difference between the two of these is when you click this, a drop-down menu appears, and when you click the variable block, the normal one, just a single number appears. This has one thing, which is add. And basically what it does is it adds an index. 
Now I'm going to make a comment block here just to show you what the inside of an array actually looks like. So we're going to do array or index number right here, and we're going to do a value uh, to the side right here. And I want you to click the array once, click the add button. What we've done is we've created index zero. And the way it goes essentially is the first number you put in is actually called index zero. Um, and we put in a value of, well, zero. So in index zero, we have a value of zero. If we click it one more time, what we do is we add a second index. You see it's zero, uh, semicolon zero. So we add in index one, another value of zero. And I want you to do this two more times, add two more indexes, and then fill in the rest of this comment block. I'm also going to be doing it simultaneously. So now what you have is what we call a blank array, which is basically you can put it in any value you want and these indexes actually exist for you to put in those uh, values in the first place. Now what if we didn't want to set up a blank array? What if we wanted to just make an array with numbers that we could pull out any moment? Well, we could change the numbers here. So here I'm going to change index 0 to let's just say a value of 3. What that would do is it corresponds inside the actual array we find index 0, and this value of 0 now is a value of 3. You can do the same thing with other numbers, like 6. And you change index 3 into a value of 6 from 0. Now you see a little bit of why the array block is so valuable. It's because if we want to just say save 2 in index 1, and we want to save 4 in index 2, we now have 4 different numbers saved in one single variable. And especially if these numbers are somehow related in some way, we can pull out different numbers from different indexes however we please. I'm going to update our um, visual index for you right here. So if we say wanted a 6 somewhere in our program, we would just simply pull out the number from index 3. If we wanted a 3 in our program, we would simply pull it out of index 0. This is why arrays are so compact and so useful in EV3 programming. So now, how do you actually pull numbers out of the block? So how do we actually read the numbers that we've set up in our array? We use what's called the array operations block. It should be the third from the left in data operations. What this block does is it can, you input an array in or you input an index and you get out a number from your array. So what we can do is if we take our array one variable and we read this numeric array, we can actually plug in this wire into the first um, open space in the data operations tab. Basically, the array in is like which array am I reading and like which variable, which array am I reading properly. Now that you have that set up, you can now choose your index from the second one. So let's just say we want to read index one or we wanted a value of 2 in our program. We would then read index 1. And what would happen is you would take this array, the array we have in this comment block right here, and you would plug it into this array operations block. It would then read index 1, because we set this as read an index, and you would come out with a number of 2. Let's just say we wanted a value of 6. Which would you plug into the index? Well, you probably guessed correctly, which is an index of 3. You would come out with a value of 6. This is how you use the read at index block. There's actually another really important function of the array operations block, which is called write at index. Basically, you, ter you change um, the read at index to write at index. And you can do the exact same thing as you did before which is keep the wire plugged in so you know you're no, you putting your value into array 1 and now you see there's one extra block which is value and the reasoning behind this is you choose your index and you can actually change the value of that index into something different so let's just say we want to change still sticking with index 3 we want to change the 6 into a 1 when you would do this this would come out this wire would essentially change array 1 so what you have to do then is you have to take write array 1 and plug the new value back into the variable. And what this would actually do is if we copy it over, is it would at index 3 change the value to 1. As 
we mentioned before. So this would be the new array one, and our old array one would be obsolete. How do we use these two functions, the read at index and write at index, to write whichever values we want in our array? Well, this is where a blank array comes into play. So if you go back into your original array one and you set it up as 0, 0, 0, and 0, the default of your actual array is going to be, of course, 0, 0, 0, and 0. Uh, give me a second. And what this will now do is you have a clean array, which with all zeros, you can rewrite any number you want. Now, using the same principles as we did right here, um, we can write actually different values for different indexes completely uh, free of any hindrance. So if we want to write something in index 0, let's just say we wanted a value of 1. We can now write that in the um, array. And so now what you have is an index that looks like this, or an array that looks like this. Of course, we can use the write array function more than once in a singular array. Let's just copy over all of this. And we want to rewrite, uh, let's just say, index 1. And we want to, in index 1, place a value of 2. So now in the second um, array operations block, we can use, well, obviously, index 1, and we change it to a value of 2. So basically what it takes is the array 1 that's already been updated to have a value of 1 in index 0, and puts it into another array operations block where it keeps this original or the second iteration of the array and it changes it one more time in order to get uh, a value of 2 in index uh, 1. So we can change it here right now. And essentially what that does is you are left with an array 1 that has replaced the original blank array with the one shown right in this comment block. We can quickly test to see if our array is working. What you do, obviously, connect your robot. And you want to read, basically, your array and after every single array operations block. So we're going to grab your read array block after it plugs it back in, and then we're going to grab it at the end. Of course, you also want a wait for break button, because keep in mind that these processes literally take no time to operate, and your program will be done before it's even finished. So, obviously, play and run, download and run, and you can see our like array of functions are already completed and it's just waiting for us to press the center button. Now what you can do is, well, we set up our array properly, right? And so here we expect to see a value of 1 in index 0 and a value of 0 in all the other indexes. Pull the wire out and you can see that it's 1, 0, 0, 0, exactly like how we envision it to be. Therefore, this array operations is working properly. Now, if we see the next one and we hover over this wire, we get 1000 because it has already plugged it back in into array 1, and that's now the value of array 1. So we expect to see what we've laid out here in the comment block, which is 1200. 0, 0. Drag the wire out, and you see, well, 1200. 0, 0. This means that your write at array is working completely perfectly. Now, for one last thing, let's program. Uh, a read at interval. Like, let's just say we wanted a 2 value out of this array, and we happen to just know that 2, a value of 2, is at index 1. What can we do? Well, take your array operations block, just do a control click, and then do a read at index numeric. And now you can actually, let's just duplicate this array block, this read array, and then plug it into the array in. So now we want to read index 1, and we get a value of 2 out of here. So if everything's set up properly, which it is, and we're reading the correct index, which we are, we should get a value of 2 when we run this program and drag the wire out. Let's see. And yep, we get just a value of 2. Now, this is how you take uh, values out of an array and how we actually use an array outside of the purpose of storing large quantities of information. So like, let's just say we know that there's a pattern between index, uh, the index and the value. For example, here the value is always one higher than the index. If we ever want to take a value from that array, we can use the read at index operation. Now let's try it again, and let's just say we wanted a value of zero. Well, we can plug in either index two or index three. And what I'm actually gonna do to show you this, and you don't necessarily have to do this, is I'm gonna copy these two read functions. 
and we're going to put one at index 2 and we're going to put one at index 3. Both of these wires coming out should of course be a value of 0 and let's see if this is true. We get a value of 0 as you can see here and we also get a value of 0 here which means that our array is both set up properly as you can see here and we can also pull out variable values um, like this. This is a good way to test to see if your uh, array actually is set up properly, is actually putting in the values properly, and is reading the numbers and values from the correct indexes. This is a great way to test in the future. I hope you enjoyed the sixth video in my UV3 programming series, and I'll see you next time on how you, you can use the arrays in more practical senses. For example, using um, values that you take from your color sensor, values that you take from your loops, etc. from within your program, and how you can actually use this array in your autonomous programming. Until next time, bye-bye.